classification technique called classification trees. The actual technique is called CART and it stands for classification and regression trees. We've already discussed the distinction between classification and regression. Classification is when you want to classify the cases into one of few categories. Regression is when you want to predict a numerical value for something. Now this technique that we are learning can actually be used for both classification and regression. In this lecture, we'll be looking at its use simply for classification alone. Let us take a very quick example to understand what this technique is all about. Okay, so suppose you're given this data set in which you have the attributes income, education, family size, and type of car that somebody owns. Okay, so for example, the first row tells us that there's somebody with an income of $200,000. They have an education of one, whatever that may mean. And uh, we assume that it's been coded. Say one might mean uh, undergraduate or, or, you know, or high school. Two might mean undergraduate. Three might mean, uh, you know, graduate degree or whatever. And family size is number of members in the family and the type of car that they happen to own. This person owns a luxury car. So this is what we have. Now in classification trees, what we are trying to do, of course our uh, understanding here is that uh, the type of car is our target attribute. And in classification trees, what we are trying to do is to simply identify in rule form what determines the target attribute. So for example, if you look at this data, you would realize that anybody who's got an income of over $200,000, equal to or $200,000, happens to own a luxury car. Okay, There happen to be just two such cases, 200,000 and 300,000, sorry, three such cases, 250,000. All of them own luxury cars. And nobody with an income of greater than or equal to 200,000 has any car other than a luxury car. Okay, So you might say, well, by looking at this data, I can form a rule that says, if somebody's income is greater than or equal to 200,000, then they, we can predict that they will own a luxury car. That's one rule. Another rule that we can come up with also by looking at the data carefully is if somebody has an income of less than or equal to 30,000, then they own a compact car. That's just another rule. By looking at the data, we are able to find the rule. Yet another rule that we may see is if somebody has an income of between 100,000 and 200,000 and their family size is less than three, then too, they happen to own luxury cars. Finally, if somebody has an income of between 100,000 and 200,000 and the family size is greater than or equal to five, then they own an economy car. Okay, these are just rules that we are able to discern by just looking at the data. Okay, so you might think of this classification tree technique as something like rule archaeology. We are literally digging into the data and trying to identify some patterns which might help us to predict the uh, target attribute in terms of the predictor attributes. But we are expressing our uh, relationship in the form of rules. Okay. Then the automatic question that arises is, well, when we did affinity analysis, there too we identified rules. Okay, so what is the connection between rules as we saw in affinity analysis and rules as we are discussing it here? Okay, now remember in affinity analysis, there was really no target attribute. Those rules were simply saying if somebody bought these items or if some basket contains these items, then the basket will also contain that other item. Okay, of course, we're not saying it'll always contain the other item. We were able to give some numbers in terms of, you know, confidence and support and lift and so on. That's the kind of rule we looked at here uh, in, in that context. Whereas in this context, we are looking at rules for classification, for predicting the target attribute. Okay, so the two are pretty different. In affinity analysis, we were looking for items that were free frequently co-occurring in baskets. Whereas here, it's much more general. It works on general data sets and we are trying to look for rules to predict the target attribute. 
So let's take an example of the output that the classification tree method might produce. So here a classification tree has been built for identifying who are the people who are likely to accept bank loan offers. Okay, as you can see here, this is borrowed from Data Mining for Business Intelligence, Shmueli, Patel, and Bruce. So this tree says that people who have an income of less than or equal to 92.5 will reject the loan offer. Zero standing for rejecting the loan offer. But people who have got an income of greater than 92.5, then we look at their education. Okay, if their education level is less than or equal to 1.5 or greater than 1.5. If the education level is less than or equal to 1.5 and if their family size is less than or equal to 2.5, then too, they reject the loan. On the other hand, if their education level is less than or equal to 1.5, family size is greater than 2.5 and their income is less than 116, then they reject the loan. If the income is uh, greater than 116, they accept the loan. Okay, And this is what is the overall tree that the method, classification tree method, has deduced from the data. Okay, So here you can see that all the nodes at the bottom of the tree, that is, there is nothing below them, they are called child nodes, and uh, they indicate the decision or the classification. In this case, classification of zero means they do not accept the loan offer. Classification of one means that they accept the loan offer. So that's what the classification tree method does. So this is the output of the overall process. So essentially what has happened is that the classification tree method has looked at the entire data and figured out these rules. So for example, how many rules are there? Well, every leaf node, that is a node which has nothing going below it, every leaf node corresponds to a rule. So one of the rules says, if income is less than or equal to 92.5, they reject the loan. If income is greater than 92.5 and education less than or equal to 1.5 and family size less than or equal to 2.5, then too, they reject the loan, etc., etc. Right? So you can look at every leaf node and see that it actually represents a rule. Okay? And of course, understanding that the value in the leaf node represents the actual classification uh, of the target attribute. And if you understand that, then if you trace the path from the root node, which is the topmost node, if you trace the path all the way down to a leaf node, then you actually get a rule that the system has identified. So this is really what the output of the method is. We will later on take a look at how the method actually manages to do this. But of course, as usual, we'll not be doing this by hand. Instead, we'll let the computer figure it out. So all we need to do is to understand the essence of the technique, how to provide the inputs, how to interpret the output. Okay, so this is what we had just discussed. If income is less than or equal to 92.5, then the person who does not accept the loan is a non-acceptor of a loan. Okay, if income greater than or equal to 92.5 and education less than or equal to 1.5 and family size greater than 2.5 and income greater than 116, then they accept the loan. Okay, so that's a note. Of course, you may notice that this rule can be simplified because if income is greater than 92.5 and income is greater than 116, then of course you can say income is greater than 116. You don't have to say both of these. Okay, so you can simplify the rule that the system identifies. As we've just discussed, we can condense the rule. Take a look at the tree once again and see if you can identify two more rules and also answer the question of how many rules are there in this tree. I suggest that you pause the video at this point Think about your answers for a little bit and then continue the video. Okay, can you find two more rules? As we already discussed, every leaf node represents a rule. Every leaf node represents a rule. 
as we just saw. For example, if income less than or equal to 92.5, they don't accept the loan offer. If income is greater than 92.5, 92.5, education is less than 1.5, less than or equal to 1.5, and family size is less than or equal to 2.5, then too, they don't accept the loan offer, right? So if you look at every single leaf node represents a rule, and therefore you can identify two more rules by simply tracing the path from the root node to any two leaf nodes, and you, you would have identified two more rules. How many rules in all? Well, as we've already discussed, every leaf node represents a rule. And here we've got seven leaf nodes in all. Therefore, this diagram represents seven rules. Now, why do we call this a tree in the first place? This hardly looks like a tree. It will start making sense to you if we look at it upside down. Okay, so now you can see that it looks more like a tree. This is like a root, and then you've got branches going upward, and branches branching, branching, branching. That sort of looks like a tree. That's why they call it a tree, and they use all kinds of tree terminology in talking about these things. For example, they call this the root node. Remember, when it was upside down, this was like the root. They call this the root node, and then they call these as leaf nodes because they are at the very tip of the trees. So these are leaf nodes, and then they refer to these as branches, and so on. And these nodes are referred to as interior nodes. That's not a tree terminology. And they refer to these as leaf nodes. So that's the general reason why these things are called trees, and they occur very, very often in the field of computer science. So again, how would we apply all of this in practice? So we take our original data, divide it, as usual, into training partition and a test partition. We'll use the training partition to build the tree. Okay, how exactly the tree is built? Well, we'll understand that process a little bit later on. But as you already know, we'll use a computer program to figure all that out. Okay, so we've got a computer program. The uh, you know R has a method to do this, and many other uh, data uh, analytics packages will have techniques to do this. So we use the training partition and try and arrive at a bunch of rules based on the training partition. Then, of course, we'll be able to see how well the method does on the training partition itself, right? As we can always create the classification confusion matrix or the error matrix on the training partition. Uh, of course, if this is decent, if it's something we like, we can then try to go to the test partition and then try to see how the tree performs. Right. So, for example, in the test partition, for every case, this is the actual outcome, whether each person accepted the loan offer or not. But we apply the tree onto each of those cases, right, because when you have the case, You've got a certain income, certain education, certain family size, credit card average, etc. You can run each case through the tree, right? It's after all, there's a rule. So you apply the rule, and the rule says something, and that's the model prediction. So for every case, you have the reality of what the case was, whether the person, concerned person, accepted the loan offer or not, and then you have what the model predicted. Okay, you can then compare these two and arrive at a classification confusion or error matrix and figure out how well your model is performing. So by comparing the actual scenario versus what the model predicts, we can find out how good the model is. We'll see more specifically how this is done at the end of this lecture. So why do we use classification trees? They're obviously very simple to understand, widely applicable, and they provide fairly good performance in many cases. So it's a nice, attractive technique to use.